Problem, extra example one for lecture one, you're asked to classify whether certain observed changes are either chemical or physical. So let's remind ourselves what these terms imply. A chemical change means we're forming new compounds. Whereas a physical change involves a change of state. Now a change of state can mean something going from liquid to gas, for example. Or a solid dissolving to make a solution. So with these ideas in mind, let's now look at each of these four changes and try and interpret them. The first is the rusting of an iron nail. Now what do we see? We observe a new compound. That's the reddish-brown material that is formed on the surface of the nail. And that compound is an iron oxide. Therefore, this change is in agreement with our definition of a chemical change which involves the making of a new compound. Therefore, we have here a chemical change. Let's look at the second example, the evaporation of dry ice solid carbon dioxide. What do we observe? We observe the disappearance of solid carbon dioxide. But is anything new being created? If we were to do this, for example, by putting a small piece of dry ice inside a balloon and sealing off the balloon, we would observe that the balloon expanded, but that if we took that balloon and cooled it down again, for example, in liquid nitrogen, very cold material, we would get back dry ice. This is just a change of phase. The solid carbon dioxide is going to gaseous carbon dioxide. And that is just a change of state, solid to gas. Constantly, this is a physical change. The third of our examples is burning charcoal in a barbecue. Once again, we see the disappearance of something. We see the disappearance of the charcoal. The charcoal is, of course, carbon. But there are other things going on. 
most obviously, the production of heat energy. As we shall see later on, this is an exothermic, a heat delivering reaction. Furthermore, if we were to trap the products of the burning of charcoal in a barbecue, they would not be carbon. They would, in fact, be carbon dioxide. An invisible change is also going on in this process. Oxygen from the air is being consumed, and together, both carbon from the charcoal and oxygen from the air are combining to give a new compound. So this gives, with oxygen in the air, carbon dioxide. This is a new compound. And consequently, this too is a chemical change. Our final example in this problem is the preparation of cream from whole milk. Now you may not know very much about this process, so let me tell you just a little bit about it. You take whole milk and effectively you centrifuge it. You allow it to settle into different phases under a gravitational field. In the old-fashioned way, you just let the milk stand and the cream would settle to the top because cream, being the fat part of milk, is less dense than the aqueous part of milk. But in modern cream-making plants, they actually put the milk in a centrifuge and spin it at high speed to separate the cream. But there's no reaction involved here. Milk, in its original state, contains fat globules in an aqueous suspension, a watery suspension. And all we're doing in making cream is to take those fat globules and let them agglomerate to cream. And if we like, we can take the cream, mix it with the residue, the aqueous suspension medium of the milk, and homogenize them and get milk back again. So this is reversible. So all these indications show that this is just a physical change. So once again, to emphasize, chemical changes involve the formation of new compounds or the destruction of old compounds, usually both. Physical changes involve changes of state from one phase, gas, liquid, or solid, to another, or vice versa, or separation of different phases, one from another, in this case, fat from an aqueous suspension in milk giving cream.